guessing most people have probably encountered this window, um, taken from Netflix, which shows you a list of suggestions to watch instantly. Whether it's Netflix showing you suggestions to watch or Amazon giving you suggestions to buy, a lot of companies are using machine learning to predict and suggest results and ultimately create better content for users. So how can we build that same sort of functionality into our bubble apps? Uh, it's pretty simple. All you need with machine learning is to feed it a bunch of data and then get back some sort of output that you can use to recommend better content. And this is probably one of my best examples. You All you gotta do is feed it a ton of data, like in this case, birds, and then you need to train something called a model to basically specify, hey, these are ducks, these are not ducks. The same thing happens with self-driving car technology. Hey, this is a tree, this is a pedestrian, and the car learns over time not to hit those things. But for our purposes, we're going to be relying on an already built out model called Monkey Learns Affinity Profiler. And how this works is they have a ton of keywords and suggestions from all over the internet, and they bake this into one big machine learning model. So for example, all you need to do is feed it some text and it will use all of the keywords in its database to give you a category for who these people are in your application. So if you think about it, you have all of these different content suggestions. So everything from art aficionado to health and fitness buff, and there are a bunch of different things to learn about this model, how it works, but for this example, we're just going to skip over all of that and get to actually building it into our application. So head over to a bubble window and we're gonna start out in the design tab. All we need is one button because we're going to bake this into the signup flow of this application. So we're gonna put this button right in the middle. We're gonna call it sign up. And now we can head over to the plugins tab. There are gonna be two plugins you need for this example. The first is going to be the Twitter plugin. So if you don't have that, click add plugins and sign in with Twitter. We're going to use Twitter as an example data set, something to feed into the model to get something back. I highly recommend using social networks because that's where people tend to post a lot of information about themselves and will help you get better content recommendations rather than relying on, let's say, an input form to say, hey, tell me a little bit about yourself and then trying to get insights from that data. Once you have the Twitter API installed, the next plugin you will need is Blockspring, which you can get by clicking on Add Plugins and then Blockspring. The reason why Blockspring is going to save us so much time is that it is doing a ton of the work for us in the API connector window. So for example, in the API connector window here, you can see that I'm building these API connections for Hacker News, which requires doing a lot of weird uh, URL coding and can take a very long time. But for example, with Blockspring, they have these blocks that will basically be add-ons to your application. So for example, I can search the Amazon products for a project I'm working on and have them appear without having to mess with the Amazon API. That's exactly what we're going to do in this case. Once you have the Twitter API authenticated, meaning you've gone to developer.twitter.com and you have your API key, go to the Blockspring tab, which you've installed, and then click on Authenticate with Blockspring. That's going to take you to the Blockspring site where you can create an account if you don't have one and log in. And then once you've done that, you'll be taken back here where you can add a new block to your application. So lucky for us, Blockspring has a few hundred services and one of them happens to be MonkeyLearn. So we're going to click on search by services here. Service, we're gonna go down and look at all of the different options. We should see that come up. Let's try typing in monkey learn, make it easier. And then the call is going to be the affinity profiler. When you add a call in Blockspring, it's going to pop up a new window just to show you an example of what the text will look like and what the result will look like. So you can see here, this is taking a sample profile it looks like the founder of MonkeyLearn. We run it through the profiler and we get 
a probability score of almost 0.5 that this person is a technophile. Pretty good. So let's click Use in Bubble. And now we have access to the Monkey Learn data set just like that. Pretty amazing. Okay, so the next step is we're going to need to go back to our design tab and figure out what this button is going to do because we're going to need to do a few things. We're going to need to collect data from Twitter to sign a user up to get them into our app. And then we're going to need to take that data from Twitter, pass it to the Monkey Learn API, and then get those results and figure out what to do with them. So in cases like this, when you have a lot of complex tasks, I like to work backward. And the best way to do that is by going to the data tab. So let's first think about what kind of data we're going to need um, from our API. And there are really two things I can think about. The first is going to be that label, the technophile label. That's the thing that we're actually going to act on to be able to use to personalize data and content in our app later on. So I'm just going to call this affinity label and the field type is going to be text. We'll hit create. And then the next field is affinity confidence because I wanna make sure that it is a, enough of a good prediction so that I can use it in my application. And you can imagine later on writing rules like if confidence score is greater than 0.5, use this prediction. If confidence score is less than 0.3, do not use this prediction. So with those two data fields set in the application, I now feel confident kind of working backwards because I know, okay, that is the end point is we need labels and values for both of those. Okay, so next up is the design tab. Let's just go ahead and click on start edit workflow so that we can think about what happens when this button is clicked. So the first thing is we will need to collect data from Twitter and we'll do that via the sign up login with a social network button, OAuth provider, Twitter. And just a note here, if you haven't authenticated with Twitter and uh, built an API yet, you will get an API key button here, which you can click and it's pretty handy. It will bring you right to the Twitter site and you'll get that API key. Now that we've done that, we're going to need to get that data from Twitter, move it to the Monkey Learn API, and then update our user. That sounds like it's a ton and might require a lot of steps, but we can actually make that work in just one simple workflow action. We're gonna click on make changes to current user. And the two fields that we're going to change, let's bring this over here, are affinity confidence and affinity label. Okay, so this is where most of the magic is gonna happen. We're going to need to pull the data in from the API and feed the right data from Twitter. Because we now have the Twitter credentials, we should be able to use that in the data tab. We're going to go to affinity confidence here and click on a dynamic data and then get data from an external API. And if you have that block set up correctly, it should be able to pull from here. So you'll see here affinity profiler um, I just have a ton of different stuff here for a project I'm working on. And Affinity Profile now gets dropped down here and you'll see the text element here. So this is great. This is exactly what we're looking for. You can imagine putting lots of stuff in here based on inputs. But for us, we need to grab a lot of data from Twitter. So we're going to get rid of this and we're going to click on Insert Dynamic Data again to pull more data from our database. We're going to click on current user and now you'll see something new. We have the ability to pull out Twitter information because we've authenticated with Twitter. So the first thing we're going to click on is Twitter because the timeline and Twitter are separate things. Good to note. So click on Twitter first and then description and that's going to pull out the bio of the user. So now that that's done, let's hit a comma and then space and then insert dynamic data again. And then we'll click on current user again. We'll go to Twitter timeline, and then we can actually pull out the amount of tweets from a user, and we'll pull out 10 in this case. I believe too many uh, might time out the database, so 
just a word of caution, I wouldn't recommend putting the number any higher than maybe 15 or 20. And let's take a look. We have current users, Twitter description, current users, Twitter timeline, and we're getting this error, which is probably because we haven't defined what from those tweets we wanna pull out. So click on more and then scroll down. We want just the text, which means it's going to pull out a full list of that text. Awesome. Okay, so at this point, we've given the raw text to the API. It's going to run it through the Affinity Profiler, and then we wanna pull out the probability. There we go. And probability should be right here. Let's just take a look. If we don't have this coming up right away, if, if it's not giving us that all clear sign, for example, right now, we might have to go back to our affinity profile and click on update fields. So we wanna make sure that probability is a number, category is a number, label is text. That looks good. We just want everything to match up here. We have affinity confidence as a number. So in this case, let's just be safe and click on first item to make sure that if this pulls a list, we're getting the first item out. That's basically what Bubble's trying to tell us here through this, um, this error, that the profiler might be picking out many profiles. We just want that first one because that's going to be the one that is the most confident and that we can build predictions based on. Okay, so we're gonna copy this expression now and move on to the affinity label. So click on insert dynamic data and instead of rebuilding that entire search from scratch, we can click on paste. You'll see that we will still have the entire API call here. And then instead of probability, we now just want the label and the first item as well. So we will sign up, log in, make changes to user. And then let's just go ahead and draw out an alert so that we know when this has been successful. We'll change the style to a success alert. We'll just type in success, check the data tab. Now we can go back to workflow. We will add in an element action to show this message. And now we should be ready to test this out. Let's go ahead and hit the preview button up here, which should pull open our affinity page. And now we can click up on this sign up button. And we first see that we will go to the Twitter authenticator page, which means the Twitter login is working. And this is my profile here. I will click on authorize app. I will be brought back. And there we go. We see that it took a little second to run that API call, but we saw the success message. That's awesome. Now let's go to the data tab, click on data, we'll go to app data, and we don't see anything here. Refresh data might not work either because we might just need a hard refresh of the app. So let's refresh the application. And there we go. We'll click here and we see that we have a confidence score of 0.653 and the affinity label is do it yourselfer, which is pretty funny because I consider myself a do-it-yourselfer and that's my personal Twitter profile. So there we go. It's proof that it actually works and it works really well. Let's take a look at my Twitter profile really quickly. So I talk about you know contributing, being a learner, slow reader. Um, I give usually advice about startups, but reading as well design. So pretty much what ha probably happened is the affinity profiler went through, found that I had a lot of different tweets about different advice and um, different uh, styles of reading or design skills and picked up that I'm probably, you know, a big fan of do it yourself projects um, or just learning in general, which, you know, could also be categorized with that label. But really the point of this is that now that this label's affixed, you can do almost anything with it. And that's really up to you. 
I'd recommend going to the affinity profiler page and seeing what the affinities actually look like. So art and theater, auto enthusiasts, avid investors, health and fitness buffs, music lovers, etc. So take a look when you click on, for example, political chunkies, what the keywords look like and the precision scores, all of that stuff. Study this a little bit, but then use it in your app. You know, if someone uh, signs up for a news application and you use the affinity profiler to figure out that they're a political junkie, you can then display politics news and they'll probably have a better interaction with your app. That's just one use case. And obviously, like I talked about in the beginning of this lesson, Netflix and Facebook use these kind of tools all the time to take a look at your data, to see exactly what you're interested in, and then show you more of those things so that you're more of a happy customer. So that's about it. Take a look at the affinity profiler at monkeylearn.com and let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'm really excited to see what kind of apps get built with this new machine learning technology. It's definitely still early days and there's a ton of potential and uh, can't wait to see more with it next time.